Welcome to lesson seven of uh, the uh, Paul's uh, episode or letter uh, to the Philippians. And unlike uh, unlike what uh, Dr. Peter said, you know, it, the episodes are not the wives of the apostles. And uh, when we first started uh, looking at the book of Philippians, uh, when uh, Peter, uh, Terence, and myself. We look at it and say, okay, four chapters of Philippians. I think we should be able to do it in one month. And needless to say, uh, as we study deeper, uh, we have only covered chapter two, and today we're ending chapter two uh, in, seven, in seven lessons. So what a joy it is. Huh? The series, of course, is, uh, the theme uh, for this series is, uh, we have entitled it, uh, Advance the Gospel Together with Joy. And that was uh, the Philippians uh, 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 receiving the exhortation and the encouragement from, from Paul, who is writing from, uh, from his uh, imprisonment in Rome, right? So, and today we're looking, he's, he continues them to encourage them to look at two examples. And uh, we are going to introduce to you Precious and Handsome, okay? Precious and Handsome. Uh, in a short while, you, all right. So just uh, as uh, as just have a quick recap, uh, what Paul says uh, in the into the Philippians says, what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel, and he has uh, actually reminded them uh, the the church and the people of God, to, all of us today. Whatever happens in our life, we have to look at it uh, from the as from an eternal perspective. From the gospel perspective, right, and whatever setbacks that we may encounter, uh, whatever disappointments or uh, whatever joys or success, uh, how is the gospel uh, functioning in all the in the in the context, right? How is it in how are all our successes and even setbacks uh, uh, framed in in the context of the gospel, right? And uh, and we are at this section whereby. Uh, after Paul had uh, introduced himself and given his personal testimonies, he goes on and exhort the Philippian, uh, Philippian Christians. And if you look at from verse 27 to the passage we're, we're looking at today, uh, we could put it in, in this kind of uh, summary. It says he encouraged them to live uh, worthily of the gospel together. We don't live... Uh, uh, the gospel out on our own, but it is always in the context of the church, of the people of God. Otherwise, uh, uh, we cannot be patient with one another. We cannot be love one another. We cannot serve one another if we are on an island just living uh, by ourselves, right? But how do we do that, right? It says, look to the example of Christ. Emulate, follow the humility of Christ. Uh, even when we disagree, uh, look at how Christ uh, lay, uh, left his great position, and he did not. Uh, he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he was willing to lay aside right uh, all his privileges. Uh, and and then uh, he says, uh, "Through working out your salvation in Christ, that you may shine for Christ." We don't work for our salvation, but we work out our salvation, and that uh, is uh, is uh, is explained or actually expounded. Uh, in verses 12 to 18. And today it says, as you work on the salvation, we've got two earthly examples, two people in your midst in our, uh, that you can follow, you can look at them. Not everybody will be able to exhibit everything, uh, every aspect of Christ-like nature, but you have got examples, living examples in your midst. And be encouraged by Christ-like examples of Timothy and Epaphroditus, and uh, these two men. So before I carry on, before we read the passage together, I have two questions I'd like to uh, ask us, and uh, you're going to, I'm going to stop uh, uh, my sh uh, sharing, sharing my screen, and I'd just like to hear from us. Uh, uh, you can unmute yourself. The question one is, think back in your early years or your formative years as a Christian, is there one person who has influenced you glad, uh, greatly? Okay, name one person who has influenced you tremendously. 
And what is one thing that you have learned from him or from her? So I'm going to stop share and then I'd like to see your lovely faces and hear what you have to say. Name one person who has influenced you greatly and secondly, uh, what is one thing that you have learned from him or her? Right? Anyone? I just have invited a few uh, responses. Um, I find that it's quite a, a beautiful coincidence because it was only a few days ago uh -huh. that uh, in my devotion uh, from Hebrew 13, it says, uh, remember, remember the one who brought the word of God to you. <laughs> and um, and, uh, and um, I sent a note to, to Jeffrey O. And, and I said, and, and I said to think Silok. And I said, uh, thank you, remembering you uh, in the early days. And they were, very, <laughs> they were so surprised to, to receive this. And praise God. And now we have this uh, question. Yeah. <laughs> So to me, it's Jeffrey, it's Jeffrey and Silo. Oh, praise God. Right? Jeffrey, uh, for, for those who are new, uh, Dr. Jeffrey was uh, our former chairman. Uh, he's now uh, back in Penang. And Silo is also one of our, our leaders as well uh, in, in, in the church. Praise the Lord. Okay. Uh, any others? Okay. Today, we have a little bit of interaction. Yes, uh, Brother Peter. For me, it was my um, <clears throat> first pastor you know um after i was born again second time okay <laughs> so after i born again second time i went to the the aog church in pj and the pastor there was really uh, very instrumental uh, in helping me to grow as a christian so i really look up to him respect him a lot and my spiritual wow. growth uh, has uh, been due to him and his, uh, his pastorship and his shepherding over me. Uh, I always look to him as my mentor. So that's, uh, his name is, he's, he, uh, unfortunately he has passed away. Uh, his name is uh, a doctor, the late Dr. John Yeo. Yeo, is it? Yeo. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brother Peter. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's very important that uh, that we, we share. We share. Uh, and I I just give another time for another couple of people. Anyone? Yeah. For me, uh, is uh, Pastor Ong Mun Chang. Uh, at uh, when he was just uh, form three, and I was in form four, uh, we as a Sarawakian students, we met in a, a, a school which is uh, a strong is a Boarding uh, a boarding school, and he uh, he is he is from that school, and he found out he, he knew that the Yasan students are staying in the boarding school during the uh, third term holiday. So he organized um, uh, meetings and uh, even uh, preached to us, and he even organized <coughs> this uh, commercial bus. Bus, I think it's a commercial bus or yeah, commercial bus. Uh, I mean, it's the the church lah. He brought us to church. He brought us to uh, Choyonggi's um, Choyonggi's rally. Uh, so that that was, I think, is uh, something that I really uh, can see his heart, uh, his sacrifice, uh, even during the uh, holidays after we have uh, come back to our schools. He will just take. Uh, pack his bag and then he will go uh, to the various uh, states in West Malaysia and uh, he will come and visit us. So that really impacted me, the Pastor Ong Chang. Yes, yes. He, he's still as dynamic as ever, right? And he's spoken uh, in, in a couple of our camps and even to the years. Okay, one more person, one more person. If nobody, then I can go. Yes, go ahead, please, Terence. Uh, when I first came to uh, Miri, I was not a Christian. Um, I met up with a friend over here, Charles, and he brought uh, me and Mike. Uh, Charles brought uh, me to SIB, uh, Calvary, Methodist, and he also brought me to Baptist, Piazza Baptist. So he has been very influential. And uh, even in that one year, he brought me to uh, Magudi to see... Uh, uh, his ministry over there, and then uh, his uh, preaching, and uh, he brought me also to uh, Planet Shaker in a mega hotel as well, 
where I responded to the altar call. So I was not a Christian at that time. Well, I'm not sure what I am, like, seeker. Um, one thing I learned from him is that he has a very sacrificial heart. Like. I remember we were both looking forward to watch a movie. I shared this with the youth before. Sort of like today's Avengers sort of thing. Huh? So young people, unmarried, don't have anything to do. So we were looking forward to a movie. Then we were in the movie. Then he received, uh, halfway through the movie, he received a message. And he said he had to go. He said, why? Uh, I think he said he's a youth or he's a student. Uh, a fellow brother like, uh, needed him. I said, why can't he wait? I mean, we're in the middle of a movie. He said, no, I have to go. And he just... He just walked out. <laughs> and uh, I thought that was uh, very good of him lah, in that sense. So I've also uh, uh, tried to uh, follow his, uh, his, his uh, thinking in that sense of what is a priority and what's more important in life. He's still okay. around, he's still serving. Uh, good yes. man. <laughs> still active huh? in uh, the scouts. I be- is it the scouts, I believe, also? He's an amazing man. We jokingly call him uh, Bishop. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> All right. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I mean, this news also, I did realize that uh, that uh, Terence went to the Planet Shakers. Uh, <laughs> jumping around in the house of God. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let me back. Uh, thank you for sharing. And indeed, uh, Paul directs us our attention to these uh, this, uh, two men. Uh, yeah, these two men. Uh, Timothy and and uh, Epaphras. Okay, so let us read uh, this passage, uh, this uh, uh, verse 19 to the verse 30. It says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you so that I may be cheered when I receive news about you. For I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For well, everyone looks out for their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know that Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, uh, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. Verse 23, I hope therefore to send him as soon as I see how things go with me. And I am confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think that it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker, and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to carry, uh, sorry, to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. And indeed he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him and not only and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad, and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. This is the word of the Lord from Philippians chapter 2, verse 19 to 30. Let us commit this time to the Lord. Father, we thank you again for the privilege of being able to read your word so freely, to meditate upon it and to study uh, study it, Lord, in our situation whereby we don't have to fear anybody knocking on our door or budging in, Lord, just because we're studying your word. So, Father, we want to pray that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my lips be acceptable to you, even as your spirit teach us uh, and uh, in a very special way as, and, and highlight the things in our hearts and in our lives that we need to bring into conformation, uh, conformity, Lord, uh, into alignment with your, uh, with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So there are three parts to this particular uh, passage. In one sense, uh, the first one is actually this is what we call a, a, a travel log or a, an apostolic uh, a parousia, which uh, this is what the more technical things. It says that uh, that Paul wants to to uh, is planning to visit the Philippians, yeah, but he was uncertain of his situation whether he'll be let go or whether he'll be imprisoned longer or whether he will lose his life he was uncertain but he sent okay as part of this uh, apostolic uh, parousia 
uh, Brazil is, is a presence uh, of this travel log. Uh, he's saying, I'm sending these two representatives over. One is Timothy, uh, uh, one whom he called the son, his son in the faith. And the other one is Epaphrodites, the one whom actually the Philippian church have sent to him in order to take care of him. But he had to send Epaphrodites back to the Philippians, right? And he, uh, as part of the, the nature of that kind of commendation, he will commend them, he will tell them who, who, they, who he's sending, their credentials, and why he's sending them. And he also tells them about the benefit that he will have. As we read uh, back uh, in a shop, it says that, uh, that uh, you will see that, that uh, he, it also brings benefit to, to Paul himself as well. So this is what Paul is doing, right? And he also mentioned as part of this that uh, he, he hopes to visit uh, or follow soon after he sent Timothy. We, we will see that in a little bit more detail, right? So this is the kind of commendation that we're talking about, right? I hope in the Lord uh, Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, right? So that I may be cheered when I receive news about you. That was the benefit uh, that he has, you know, even sending Timothy. Uh, he will, uh, we will discover it a little bit more when we look at Timothy. Uh, and secondly, uh, he says, I think it necessary, verse 25, to send back to you Epaphroditus, right? And then he goes and talk about the credentials of Epaphroditus, right? In that way, right? So, so when we talk about the commendation, it is to supply uh, a positive recommendation of people to secure their acceptance and respect. Now, why does he need to send Timothy? Because at this moment, uh, Paul himself is in prison. He's not free to travel. And, uh, and Timothy is, is like his, a representation to him, uh, of him. Right? He, uh, he is, Timothy, in a sense, is his alter ego, right? So because he is, uh, Timothy has uh, served together with him uh, so long that he already has the heart and the spirit of what uh, uh, what Paul uh, what Paul is. He, he kind of knows what Paul is going to say in that situation. We know that the the Philippine church, as we studied earlier, uh, was was facing a a kind of a crisis uh, in that way. One is that uh, they were under persecution, right? And secondly, there were some internal squabbles, okay? And and that's why Paul writes about the the, the topic of humility. Just be humble. Right and and maintain the unity uh, uh, and by being humble, uh, just like Christ. So Timothy is probably being sent back, right, in order that to mitigate or to mediate uh, any particular issues that's arising in the midst of uh, of the Philippian church. Uh, so so as far as uh, these two are concerned, uh, Timothy and the Prophetess, right? They, they are living illustrations. They are living examples of what it means uh, to have a partnership in the gospel, to, to, to see how God, God had begun a good work in them. Timothy uh, and Epaphrodites, they are not fully Jews, right? Uh, Epaphrodites is, is a Gentile. Timothy is half, right? So, so you have this, uh, these things that God has begun a good work in them and he was carrying it out to completion. And, and these two men shows what it's like to have uh, love, uh, this sacrificial love for the church. That's what uh, Terence mentioned about uh, Brother Charles, uh, Charles Ling, yeah? that uh, he would respond whenever there's a brother in Christ uh, or somebody in need. Right? So he would respond, right? And, and they, they, they show what it means to, what it's like to live a life that is worthy of the gospel. Chapter 1, verse 27. And, uh, and, and Paul says, you know, uh, has encouraged the, the Philippian church, uh, look out not only for, for your own interest, but for the interests of others. And Timothy and Epaphroditus are prime examples of that. We realize that this, uh, uh, when we look at their lives, faithful Christian living often is not uh, super sensational. It is uh, it is very quiet. It's very what we call uh, probably quite uneventful in that way. Uh, it is uh, it is as if that you 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 are 
you are given the chance, you know, throughout a long period of time to show acts of love in, in different kinds of situations. It doesn't have to be big. You know? uh, what kind of acts of love uh, could it be? Uh, I, if if I, we have time, we could open it up again and, and uh, all of us, all of you can share. But uh, just give you some examples. It could be just sitting down and, and listening to, to a kid, right? In, uh, 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 talking about his day or, or talking about his problem or worrying about uh, the, his family. Uh, uh, maybe his, uh, his parents uh, uh, are not at home all the time because of their work and he feels lonely. Uh, this, those are the acts of love. Maybe for some of us, it's just going to attend committee meetings, right? And uh, to organize things and to, 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 to make things, to see how we can uh, work out ministry plans, evangelism plans, or just simply uh, how to make the worship more effective. Maybe these are things like that, right? Or it's, it's offering a cup of water uh, to a contractor uh, who is coming in to, to, to work at your house, right? Uh, normally, contractors will bring their own food or on their drinks, but you can do something more, all right? And offer them something, a, a, a cup of refreshments for them, little by little over the long haul. And faithful Christian living uh, is, is simply, it looks very ordinary, looks very ordinary. And, and um, the, the key thing is, uh, and someone has put it this way, yeah? think of it as joy. Put Jesus first others and then finally yourself yeah? joy jesus first consider the others more than yourself right and as we as we hang around people who are growing in the lord who are mature in the lord uh this is much christian character you know is as much caught as taught that is it, it is picked up by constant association with mature christians are we hanging out with mature Christians? Are we uh, relating to those who are, have gone uh, further in the journey with the Lord, who are mature in the Lord? Now, we, we have been blessed uh, as a church by having uh, different pastors coming in uh, over the years, you know, over the 20, 30 years uh, of PBC. who have come in, who have, who have journeyed uh, with the Lord, who have gone through uh, personal challenges, but yet remain faithful in their service to the Lord. Uh, they have come. You know? the thing like, we think of even like Pastor Evans, you know, who have uh, who uh, who lost his son due to due to cancer, but he still he did not hold back. He still continued to serve the Lord. He still continued to come back as as often as he can back to Sarawak uh, uh, to to just to help the churches. So joy, Jesus, others, and yourself. And this is what Timothy and the Prophetitis uh, demonstrate in their life. So that's number one. So what is uh, uh, Timothy's uh, uh, commendation like in that way? All right. Okay. So uh, because of time, I, I, I would love to, to actually uh, hear from us, but uh, maybe you can put it up you know, uh, in the chat later on. What are some practical acts of kindness or service you have observed our own church members and our congregation doing for others, right? Uh, these are some things that you, you, you could have noticed, right? Uh, practical acts of kindness of service that you have observed our church members from doing, right? Uh, we won't discuss this, but if you have any responses, feel free to type into the chat uh, as well, right? Number one. So and let's look at Paul's commendation of Timothy. What was Timothy like, right? Uh, we remember that uh, Timothy uh, is, uh, is, is being sent by Paul quite likely in a gentle way uh, to, to see how uh, he, uh, he can be of help uh, to the church at Philippi. Now, this is not the, the only time that Timothy was being sent uh, in, in times of crisis. Uh, uh, Paul had also sent Timothy to the church in Corinth as well, which is a problematic church. Yeah, uh, that they had even worse problems, and, and Paul sent Timothy there uh, with his own uh, uh, very quiet and probably a more uh, uh, reserved nature, but yet to be able to solve, uh, uh, provide some leadership, that spiritual leadership in that crisis. Okay? So here, here he says, verse twenty: I have no one else like him. Okay, uh, and and uh, the word is like-minded. 
uh, the, the Greek word uh, is, uh, is like the same soul, same heart, and same mind, right? Uh, so this is what he's saying. Uh, he's just like me, right? Uh, 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 and I have no one else like him. Okay? The, the NIV is maybe not as, not as strong into that way, uh, in, in its phrasing or in its translation. Who will show genuine concern for your welfare? This is what, uh, what Paul is also commending, right? The two aspects uh, of him, he says, uh, first, uh, it, is, it is his Timothy's compassion. The word genuine here uh, is, is used, for example, to differentiate between a legitimate child and an illegitimate, uh, illegitimate child. He is the, the real thing. Uh, this is what uh, Paul is saying. Uh, he, he shows real concern. This is, uh, he, he doesn't hide anything. You know? he is, he, he's the real deal. And, uh, and the question then is, you know, uh, that, you know, are we able to show that kind of charity, that kind of love, that kind of concern to all people, regardless of the status or, or background, right? And he says, uh, everyone looks out for, the, uh, for their own interests, yeah? but not the, uh, the, those of Jesus Christ. Now, he's here, Paul is using this very extreme language yeah, in that way, you know, uh, to say that, you know, uh, uh, Timothy's, uh, Timothy's, concern far exceed the concern of many others as well. He is in a, uh, he is in a league of his own, right? Uh, he is in, in, in a class of his own in terms of that genuine concern in that way. Why does Paul have to say this? He says that if you have, he's putting this commendation for, uh, forward for, for Timothy because uh, when he comes in, he wants the Philippines to receive Timothy well. Uh, to, 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 because Timothy is, has to maybe have to guide them in some of their, their troubles, in, in to manage some of the crises, to give some spiritual advice and guidance, maybe to even to rebuke right, uh, uh, them. And we hear from, from, we know from the letters to Timothy, first and second Timothy, that Timothy by nature is more of a quiet person, is more of a uh, not a very forceful person. He's very different from Titus, right? So, so Timothy uh, in that nature. So, uh, so this is where Paul says, you know, uh, uh, put forward these credentials, right? Uh, you can trust him because he's not selfish. He's not looking after his own interest. He's looking out for your interest. He's looking out for the interest of Christ, right? And because Jesus loves you, indirectly he's saying, Right? He's implying because Jesus loves you and he's looking, Jesus is looking out for you as, as Timothy looks out for the, for the interests of Christ, Timothy will look out for your interests in whatever decision making you have, to, you have to go through. In whatever crisis you're going through, he is with you. He's not against you. He's helping you uh, uh, preserve the unity of the, the spirit so that the gospel in, 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 your, in the midst will not be hindered. People will continue to, get to come uh, to know the Lord. So he is showing compassion, right? Serving Christ involves serving others, yeah? Serve the interest of Christ, not with self-centered uh, motives. This is what he's saying. Now, Timothy, you know, uh, by, by, uh, for him to go from Rome to Philippi, it will be walking on, if he's, if he's on foot, he have to walk for 40 days, right? One month plus. 40 days there, and then later on, 40 days, he have to walk back, right? If he's walking on foot. Now, this is just the distance along, right? But how about us? Uh, how is our spirit when we are asked to do something, right, uh, for the Lord? Do we do it joyfully? Do we do it expectantly? Uh, or do we, uh, before even we start, we start to complain already, right? But Timothy had compassion, yeah? He had the compassion of Christ, and he was serving the interests of Christ. And in, the, in doing so, he's, he'll be serving the interests of the Philippian church as well. So what else can we see uh, from here? It says that Timothy has proved himself 
because as a son uh, with his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. And uh, it's like like the like like Jesus, right? Uh, taking up the 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 task of carpentry, you know, uh, just like his father, the tradesman passed down from from generation to generation. Like uh, like here in in uh, in in Miri, uh, one of my favorite places are Lowe's noodles, uh, and apparently that they've got three generations, you know, uh, of of making those noodles, uh, passing down from generation to generation. So this is what uh, Paul is saying. Whatever Timothy does, he would uh, or does he will he will do it with the same spirit and and with the same uh, uh, attitude and with the same excellence uh, that I desire uh, for your welfare. He has served with me in the work of the gospel. All right. So Timothy was not just a merely a volunteer, you know, come and go, but he was committed, yeah, like a son in the faith. Uh, we can you can refer to that uh, in First Corinthians 17 as well, all right? Uh, as well as how Paul uh, calls him my son, right? My son, right? And in First Corinthians 4:17, uh, when Paul writes to the uh, Corinthian church, right, uh, to urge them, uh, he says, "I I I urge you to imitate me for this reason, right? I have sent you Timothy, my son, whom I love." Right, so that he will, when he is there, he will remind you of the way of life, my, of my life in Christ. So, so Timothy was Paul's uh, alter ego. All right, uh, to minister to the Philippians. Right, he was there in Paul's place. Right, so and Paul treasured that 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 uh, companionship of of Timothy. You know, by this time, uh, uh, many of his companions has. Has gone off. Even Luke, right? Uh, uh, even Luke already also left, right? In Second Timothy, Luke was still around, right? But by this time, uh, when he wrote this, probably uh, Luke was not around, so he was uh, on his own, right? So, so only Timothy was there. So it it was a treasure. It was a treasure uh, uh, companionship. He served with them. He had care. He would care for them as Christ would care. Uh, he will care for others as Christ will care for them, right? So this is something that the, the preciousness of companionship. Do you have friends like this? Do you have companions like this in the Lord? Would they care for you as Christ would care for you? Sometimes that simply means being present there, you know, and just being quiet, just sitting with you through your grief or through your loss or through your confusion. Right, uh, and, and sometimes it's just uh, you know that they need you. They know that you need a break, so they will give you the break. You know, they'll surprise you. They'll take you out. Uh, they'll give you, uh, or, or sometimes they will connect you with the resources that you need. Right? Quietly giving you the support, connecting you with the resources. Sometimes uh, other ways, they will pray for you, or they will strengthen you. You know, uh, when you are down. So there are many ways if we look at companionship in the Lord, right? I'm sure you have experienced many, many ways. The main the important thing is not that who is my neighbor, as Jesus would say, but who am I a neighbor to, right? Uh, in the case, uh, in the parable of the Samaritan, uh, the Jew would ask, who is my neighbor? But Jesus would turn it around and say, who are you a neighbor to? You know, as, uh, as Christ will care for them, are you willing also to put yourself up to care for others? This is something, uh, this is a uh, two parts, two character of Timothy that Paul commands. Yeah, because Timothy is going in not to do uh, not for an easy job, but for a tough job to strengthen their faith, to help them in the uh, in the midst of persecution, to maybe even show his his uh, scars as well. The second area, uh, oh, by the way, Timothy's name uh, is actually pre means precious of God, right? Uh, pre uh, precious to God. So, uh, but what about Epaphroditus? Uh, we see from his name that he, he is uh, he's actually not a Jew, but quite likely to be a Gentile con convert. Yeah, uh, he, his name simply means handsome. 
Yeah, it's derived from the the the, the goddess, the Greek goddess Afro, Afro, oh, Aphrodite. Okay, uh, the goddess of love, right? So so it says, I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, right? Now we can see that Epaphroditus was not someone who is uh, who has any who holds any official position. Doesn't seem to. There's no position that is named. But, but Paul considers him highly. He says, this is my brother, my co-worker, my fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. Verse 25, right? So what we learn from Epaphroditus is we don't need a position to be useful or to be worthy of honor, right? Those who value you, I uh, know, uh, will definitely... Uh, who know you would value, should value you as well, all right? Uh, regardless of what your position is in life, right? So he, to, what was the type of man uh, 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 that Epaphroditus was? To Paul, he was this three, a brother, a co-worker, and a fellow soldier. Now, this is interesting because uh, we found that there was a reason for, for Paul to send him back, all right? And, and and for Paul to send him back, it, sometimes you know when when uh, it, the, the, if it, Paul does not explain it right, it can be misconstrued. It could be misunderstood that Paul is rejecting Epaphroditus. What did Epaphroditus do? He was sent to Paul to provide two things. One is to carry the finances, right? Uh, uh, carry the finances from the Philippian church, okay? Uh, Okay, and probably Epaphroditus will be uh, uh, going with uh, his fellow. He wouldn't carry it alone, right? Because it's a dangerous journey. So he would have some companions. But apparently, uh, it is, uh, he was ill, right? Uh, he was ill. Okay? So secondly, uh, Paul, uh, it says that whom you sent to take care of my needs. Not only uh, Epaphroditus was a messenger, but he was also expected to minister to help Paul in his area of need. So if Paul sent him back, it can be, he can be misunderstood that Paul was rejecting the Philippians, uh, uh, or Paul was rejecting Epaphroditus. But Paul was sensitive enough, uh, 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 that's what a leader, you know, uh, to have to be sensitive to, to look at the view from the other side and to, if, if as much as possible, to, to, to kind of, uh, prevent any misunderstanding. That's a tough job, actually. It says that he was distressed. He gave the reason why. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard that he was ill, right? And indeed was ill and he almost died, right? So, 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 Epaphroditus' uh, life was in danger, right? He almost died. He was ill. But the interesting part is the word distress Right, uh, is 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 something that that is only used. The other place is used is is in the place of in the Garden of Gethsemane. Right, uh, it means trouble. Right, okay, and it's it's used about uh, to describe Jesus you know, when he called uh, his close three companions in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says that he was troubled and he's fear and he was uh, in agony and he was agonizing before the Lord. You know about his crucifixion, his, his pending crucifixion. So, so that was the only other place, you know. And he was troubled, but he was not troubled for himself. He was, he was, he was anxious, he was troubled because the, the Philippians heard that he was ill. He was anxious for their anxiety, right? He was anxious for their anxiety. Then he showed that kind of love for them. He was more concerned about their emotional well-being then his own physical well-being, right? So he was distressed because you heard uh, uh, he was ill. How could they have heard? It's because maybe some of his, his uh, Epaphroditus uh, traveling companions uh, went back to the Philippine church and told them and updated about the, them about the news, right? And uh, so serving God does not uh, automatically shield us from the setbacks or sorrows in life. Indeed, uh, we, uh, more than often, uh, we have to rely on God, you know, that He becomes our strength in our times of weakness. And Paul says, 
God had mercy on him, right? Uh, God had mercy on him. He says that if Epaphroditus had died, right, it would have been sorrow upon sorrow, right? Leaders, I think one of the one of the challenges and uh, uh, of leadership is that we are connected. Uh, we we cannot be aloof, right, and, uh, from from the uh, from the troubles of the uh, of the congregation of the church. We are not emotionless uh, robots, you know. Do one task and another. Da, da, da. We are so connected with each other's lives and uh, growing and, and maturing leaders you know, uh, feel uh, or empathize with the troubles uh, that the, the congregation is going through. But he says, but God had mercy on him, right? How was the prophet uh, healed? There was no mention to it. Uh, was that miraculous healing? Was it a medical help? Uh, we do not know. Silent, uh, scripture is silent on that. But what, what Paul is saying that he talks about the sovereignty of God again here. Uh, Epaphroditus experienced uh, God's mercy. And we need to experience God's mercy daily as well. So, so this is a type of help uh, that uh, he needed. There's a couple more. He said, so, so Paul says, verse 29, uh, 28, he says, so that's the reason why I'm sending you back. Okay, I'm sending you back so that you may see him again and be glad and have uh, less anxiety. You know, what he's saying that when I send uh, Ephraim this back, I think everybody will have a peace of heart and peace of mind. There'll be peace of all. I'm happy, you're happy, Epaphroditus is happy, right? Okay, so it says, welcome him with, uh, in the Lord with great joy, honor people like him. He almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help that you yourself cannot give me. Then you ask the question, didn't the Philippians uh, send help? Yeah, they sent uh, financial help. Uh, but there's one thing that they could not be, is that they could not be with Paul. But Epaphrodite represented them. That is the ministry of presence, right? A companionship. Uh, they send their, not only the financial part, and they also send uh, they also send something to represent him. That's why this is the, the, uh, you know that uh, Zach uh, is graduating. Uh, our our Zach Tang is graduating in November. I was looking forward to, to joining him and uh, to celebrate uh, uh, at his graduation. But because of this COVID nineteen and all the travel restrictions, and uh, uh, in the middle of uh, uh, November, we've got two weddings, right? I said, if I go there, it's going to be very difficult for me, you know. Uh, I may miss uh, out on the wedding, so I said, better not, you know. But the, the importance of presence, you know, uh, is uh, we cannot underestimate it. Don't underestimate your presence in each other's life, right? So, so welcome him, he says. Uh, avoid underappreciating faithful service to Christ, all right? This is quiet service. If Paul had not highlighted this, the uh, Epaphroditus would uh, definitely uh, not, not bring it up, right? Uh, he quietly served. So my challenge uh, for, is this. Are our eyes open to those who are serving quietly, faithfully, you know, uh, and just coming to church, right? They may not be up front uh, on stage, right? And again, I, I want to say, I appreciate all those who are serving in more of the public, uh, more visible uh, positions, right? And you also give of yourselves, right? Uh, practices, uh, time, effort, prayer, and all those things. But there are also those who are serving quietly. Our eyes open. Do we recognize them as well? Do we honor them? So these are the two recommendations, right? So just to summarize this, uh, which leads us to some questions. Uh, in this, right? So, uh, as Paul says, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, honor people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. I think uh, these four, these four uh, questions, serving Jesus and others will cost you. What cost am I willing to, to incur in obeying Jesus? This morning, I was reading the, the testimony of an elderly, yeah, uh, from the church uh, 
that Pastor Wang Yi, I think it was pastoring, Pastor Wang Yi was arrested. And so the police, uh, the security forces came uh, in China, right? This is in China. Yeah. Came to, to, to uh, bring uh, this, the elder of the church to, uh, to, for questioning. And he was telling before, as the police came and to arrest him, right, and bring him to questioning, uh, he was telling the wife and the children, you know, don't resist, don't do anything to antagonize them. Uh, in part of his testimony, he said, you know, of, uh, of his experience, he said, you know, the police still came and scolded and, and, and really uh, tried to intimidate the wife and, and the child. You know? And one of the things he said this, is this, you know, you know why do I still remain in Ch uh, Chengdu, right? Uh, I could have gone away from some way. Uh, uh, I, could, I could have just made my life easier and just go away, you know, uh, from the church. You know, I could live in peace. But it says a shepherd needs to be where the sheep is. You know, as an elder, he's a shepherd as well. As a leader, he's a shepherd. He wants to be where the people are. So what cost am I willing to incur in obeying Jesus? And deep and abiding community, you know, that friendship is formed when we serve together in gospel partnerships. Who am I working with, right, uh, to, to advance the gospel? It could be as uh, simple as I'm praying together with somebody in church for the salvation of, of their loved ones. And I'm praying with them consistently and I'm encouraging them. I'm asking God to, 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 to make a way. And if I'm able to, I would, uh, I would visit or I would just uh, 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 you know, do whatever means it can to advance the gospel. Or as a church, are we partnering with other churches or other organizations to advance the gospel? We also need to recognize that there are unsung heroes. They sustain, they enrich, they build up the church, right? Now you can see a list, another list in Romans chapter 16, right? So can, how can we honor them? We don't idolize them, but can, how can we honor them in church? It could be as simple as says, thank you. And I, I, I'm glad we did this and I saw this and I appreciate that, right? Or can, how can you honor those who and all the, our unsung heroes in church. And finally, for ourselves, how can we cultivate a servant heart of selflessness? So these four application questions and challenges for us as we consider uh, precious and handsome in the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for uh, listening in. God bless you.